Shut up and sit down. World-class cannabis seeds. Available online or in stores. Yo, what up, OGs? I missed you guys, and I am back from my two-week adventure up the northwest coast. Started here in Southern California. We trekked through Northern California, through Oregon, through Washington, to the farthest point on the northwest coast without actually crossing over into Canada. It was a great time, great adventures on the road, being with your friends and just documenting the entire, entire process for my OGs. It was just a blast. I cannot wait to share the experience with you guys. We made a vlog for every day that we were actually out on the road. So I'm going to be breaking that down into little 15 minute segments because of the gosh dang strike on my channel. Um, we're going to do like a day per vlog and then hopefully at the end of it, when my strike's been lifted up and I can upload videos longer than 15 minutes, we're gonna make like a full length video. But that's gonna be like probably around November, December time frame when my strike gets lifted. But you guys are gonna be, uh, be expecting some vlogs, daily vlogs, well not uploaded daily, but it's gonna be daily like one through 16. Nah, forget it. You're, you're gonna get at least two vlogs a week, basically. And then the new season six is starting. Whew, my right arm is getting tired from holding the camera up. Um, new season six is starting in a matter of a couple of days. Just have to fix the intro. We got to fix this from season five to season six. Boom. Start up season six. Season six is going to be a vlog styled season where we're going to be consistently uploading videos. I'm thinking like four, five, six days a week. Maybe take one day out of the week as a break. Um, but yeah, there's going to be some videos that are relatively boring. Others that are very very interesting, but we're going to get back to the basics and we're going to showcase everything. No matter how minute, no matter how insignificant I think it may be, we're going to, we're going to be touching on these small things because there's a lot of growers that just, that there's a lot of growers that have been doing it for a while, like myself and even longer than I have, that just brush over these, these easy daily garden techniques that have just literally been like, it's muscle memory for us now. But for the newer growers, it's something that they're like, they're critically researching and want to know. So that's going to be the point to this new season, season six. Oh man, arm keeps getting tired. But anyways, guys, we're going to update you guys really quick on our Haze Extreme behind me here. Also, also we got our auto flowers down there. We're going to update you guys on. But let's first talk about this big bitch here. She has been vegging for 30 weeks. Whew, it's a long time. She started indoors, let's see, can we get her focused? There we go. She started indoors under our G8 900 watt LED along with all of our other Crop King Seed Genetics, our White Cookies, our Zeus, uh, what, was, what else was in there? The Haze Extreme that you're looking at now, and then um, Crown Royal. How, how can I miss the Crown Royal? Um, now those girls were harvested about a month or so ago, and when we initially flipped those girls to flowering, this was the biggest girl out of the entire tent. She was literally consuming light from the other plants, just taking over their canopies. So we pulled her out of there, um, and we've, we've had her outdoors ever since, I believe like 19, 18, 19 weeks outdoors now. And it's kind of crazy to see where she has come from, being an indoor plant, being pretty tall, but yet skimpy, to being tossed outdoors to just exploding with growth and just becoming this big thick bush and I mean it's it's all the way around we'll take a we'll take a quick 360 walk around her she is just a beautiful bush really really loving these haze extreme genetics just beast mode standing about five and a half feet wide and about six and a half feet almost seven feet tall just a massive girl. Now she has not started flowering yet. No signs of pistols at all. No signs of pre-flowers, nothing. So as soon as she does start flowering, she is gonna be like, she's gonna get massive, like huge, massive, like 
double, this, okay, maybe not double, but she's going to get freaking big. Um, you'll notice that her leaves, you know, she's not as perky, as happy, as lifted as we want. Um, it is rather hot here in Southern California today. She hasn't been watered in a few days, so that's going to be somewhat of um, somewhat of this stress signals coming through our fan leaves here, just letting us know, like, hey, you know, I'm a little thirsty, not super perky. Um, now you'll notice, like up here, she's looking nice and perky, nice and good. Now we'll get the tips of our plants looking nice and perky on this girl, but. Um, but as for a total plant to be every fan leaf on her be perky, it, it, that hasn't been the case here with this outdoor plant. And I want to say that's because she's just so big. She hasn't been really thinned out at all. No maintenance at all has been done to this plant. She's just been growing under natural sunlight out here. And down here, taking a look at her massive, just massive trunk, massive branches. Um, the soil down here, we only have about an inch of soil before it's we're down to the roots. And I don't know if you guys can actually see the roots, but it is um, it's pretty compacted down there with roots. And I, I don't wanna say she's, she's root bound because I almost don't believe it. We're in a 30 gallon pot and she's only about six and a half feet tall. I don't believe she's root bound, but in all honesty, she might be. I'm not quite sure. I don't know if a bigger pot would help her spread her arms even more. Um, the rule of thumb is usually for a gallon you have a foot of growth. So realistically I should be able to grow a 30 foot tree in a 30 gallon pot. But it doesn't seem like that's the case here. So I'm a little, a little confused with that. Um, we, here in Southern California we're only allowed to water two days a week. With our severe drought we're in and with the water restrictions. And now the two days a week for watering this big girl, I don't think that's enough. Um, that's the regimen that we've been staying on top of. I've been gone for two weeks. So my parents have been taking care of our haze extreme here and our early miss autoflowers down here. Um, so I do believe that maybe she can use a little more water in her life if she was maybe thinned out a little more. Throughout the middle section here, just just a nice pruning to where we can get light penetration everywhere, not taking off a crazy amount of branches, but just really kind of just thinning her to get that light penetration and to allow the wind to kind of blow through her a little easier. Um, and then, of course, getting a trellis system set up. I think we're going to create some sort of 2 by 4 like trellis system with poles coming up and then wrap like a net around her to support um, the flowers that are going to be developing quite soon here. The end of August, beginning of September usually is the uh, the flowering time for Southern California. So just in a matter of a few weeks or so, this plant is going to get much, much bigger. I'm going to have to be on top of my game a little more. Past two weeks as I've been gone, this plant has not been receiving any type of feeding at all. It's just been, just been water, solely just a strict water feeding schedule. I didn't want to to leave that on my parents with the whole feeding schedule and everything. So just to make their lives easier, I said, just make sure they're getting their water that they need as much as possible. I know with these water restrictions, it makes it hard. So moving on to our autoflowers here, currently day 87 with these girls. Now autoflowers have the quickest cycle out of all types of cannabis. The ruderalis strain from start to finish is 90 days. Now we are currently on day 87, three more days to go. I'm gonna cut the three days short because these plants don't need to be sitting out here in this extreme heat for three more days. They're ready to be harvested, they're ready to go right now, so we are gonna do that right after this video. Let's take a quick look at these girls though. So this is my first time growing autoflowers. I didn't really know what to expect, and I've had a great season experimenting with them. They were some of the easiest plants I've ever grown in my life. I literally just germinated the seeds, dropped them in here, and let them do their thing outdoors. We did um, consistently feed these girls up until we left with a light, light feeding schedule. But the past 19 days, they have received no type of feeding schedule whatsoever at all. Just plain old water. So they've begun their flush literally a week earlier than I normally would. I normally flush for two weeks. These plants have been flushing for a total of three weeks. You'll notice we're getting a little bit of these crispy leaves going on here. 
that's okay. I haven't been home to pull them off, and they've also been accumulating from the heat and also the fact that we've not been feeding these plants. You'll notice that they're a lot more yellow and lime green rather than the rich green that they, uh, they need to be. Now they are nearing their harvest date, so the yellowing is not something to be too concerned about. Now you'll notice this plant here, this plant back here probably did one of, it's one of our best auto flowers. Nice, compact, dense flowers. Very nice. Let's see if we can get a zoom in. Not as trichy as I would like, but they are still quite frosty. Now this early mist strain is a high CBD percentage compared to its THC value. Um, so that's going to be cool. I've never really grown a high CBD strain before. Now this early mist that we're taking a look at here, it's got a little bit of purpling from the cooler nights, but also right here, this plant has been sunburned quite badly. Now you'll notice the calyxes are turning brown. Now right in here, when we filmed that last, uh, I think it was two updates ago, the rainy montage. Oh, excuse me. The rainy montage update of our auto flowers. Uh, we did accumulate a little bit of bud rot right in here. Now we, we pulled that bud rot off as soon as we, we realized that that accumulated there and it stopped the spread. Now it made this plant quite susceptible to being exposed to the, the inside of the flowers, to the stem, and it made it very exposed to the sun and to the heat. And that's what's happened here. The, the plant has literally been sunburned. That's what the brown calyxes are. The crispy leaves. Just completely, completely sunburned and damaged. Now I'm not sure if that flower is still going to be viable. I mean, it most likely will be, but I don't know. I really don't know actually. We're going to have to take a look at that once it, we've harvested and dried it. I feel like it's going to be a funky cure to it. I might end up just throwing away this whole entire portion of this flower. Not quite sure about that. Now these black pots growing out here in Southern California with our high temperatures is not optimal at all. These puppies absorb a lot of heat and our roots from our plant are actually sitting right at the interior of the pot here. It's heating up these 107, 108 degree Fahrenheit temperatures and it is literally just singeing the tops of our, the tips of our roots here. And that's going to carry over to your fan leaf development. You're going to get crispy fan leaves here. You're going to get crispy calyxes, crispy sugar leaves, fan leaves. Just all this is going to transfer over from your roots to your actual plant. So to prevent that, you can grow your autoflowers in shade. They don't need full sun. And that you can also cover the topsoil with mulch. And you can use a burlap sack to cover your, uh, your black pot there to kind of insulate your soil and make sure that you're not getting any of that burning transferring over to your plant. Now we're running out of time here on this update, but I'm gonna try and quickly talk about this girl. Now we've been making a time lapse out of this plant for the past 87 days. We're gonna be uploading that video pretty soon here because we're gonna be harvesting today. So literally the time lapse to this plant is is officially over. It was a fun little side project that has inspired me to do another project just like it. Um, taking a picture every single day was not the easiest task. You have to make sure you're around at the same time every single day. It kind of confines your life to this one plant and taking pictures, but it was a lot of fun and it was fun to watch this plant grow. So I want to do it better next time. So that's going to be the goal with our next autoflower project. Our next autoflower project, we're going to be growing out Jack Herrera autoflowers by Crop King Seeds. Now I'm not sure if we're going to stick to the same regimen of growing our autoflowers right here in full sun. I do believe we're going to switch it up a little bit. We're going to try to incorporate some shade into their life cycle. So we're just going to be switching up um, just little bits and pieces of what we think we did wrong with these auto flowers and just try to correct it for our next go around. So with that being said, OGs, I believe that concludes this update of me being back 
a quick update of our day 87 auto flower girls that are going to be harvested right now. I'll be looking out for this time lapse of this girl. And thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, and as always, OGs, subscribe so you're not missing out on any of this awesome content in season six. Whew. I forgot to mention, during the 16 days out on the road, always having the camera with me documenting literally everything possible, we messed up our lens. We got a bunch of dirt inside there. So, I don't really know what to do about that. Gotta take it in and get it cleaned. But if you see like, dirt, like, refractions or like, light, like reflecting off like, this blur in the camera, it's probably the dirt in the lens. So we're gonna have to figure that out.